Yes. Excellent. Hi, guys. Good morning. Um, before I get started, I want to thank the organizers of this program. It's been really great so far, and the space that this event is happening in is amazing. Um, and we feel privileged to be part of this community, so we're really excited to be here with all of you guys. Um, so I'm Katie Tedman. Uh, I lead partnerships for CryptoKitties. And what that means is that part of what I do is to try to bring more consumers to CryptoKitties and thus more consumers to blockchain technology. So most of what I'll be talking about will be through the scope of consumer interaction and consumer engagement. I'm trying to be a little more technical than usual for this crowd. Um, I know you guys are all building the building blocks here. Um, but at CryptoKitties, a lot of what we do is to uh, try to make the technology that we're all working on more consumer facing. So I'm gonna talk about technology considerations and oh, sorry. Uh, the title of my talk is Looking Backward to Look Forward. And the way that I sourced content for this was to ask the founding team of CryptoKitties what they would have done different. Uh, this made people deeply uncomfortable at first. It's not something we talk about, <laughs> um, the things that maybe we haven't done perfectly in the past. But um, once the team got talking, there were some really interesting things, some things that we could change now, some things that we can't change now. Uh, but I'll, I'll walk through some of those here. So I'm going to talk about technology considerations. I'll talk about things that have an impact on the users of our game. Um, and then hopefully look forward at how we can do better next time or we can continue to do better. So the first one that I want to talk about is something that Dieter brought up, and Dieter is our CTO. Uh, he, and this is the most technical thing that I'm going to talk about. If you have questions on this, I'll ask you to email me and I'll try to find the answers from someone who's qualified to answer. <laughs> um, but what Dieter said was that he was interested in maybe looking at a scenario of staged maturity as we launch new things. So what this might look like is on your left side uh, over there is where we're at right now. It's how CryptoKitties launched. We went straight from our beta test into our main game. There was no in between. Uh, as an organization, we typically like to move fast and break things, and that is not possible in a blockchain environment. So. What Dieter talked about was if we did something where we created a fully decentralized environment, but one in which there were switches that we could make changes along the way. And consumers could decide if they want to come in at this middle point. Do you want to come in when our company can still make changes to improve the experience, to maybe rectify bugs, maybe if we find deficiencies in something that we built, fix those deficiencies before we go completely autonomous. And then in a stepped approach, start to, um, in essence, break the key off in the lock and eliminate the ability for us to make any changes to what we have there, but give ourselves a stepped approach to almost continue a beta in the public launch, uh, but continue to make a better experience for consumers. Oh, this looks crappy. Uh, Fabiano, who is one of the co-authors of the ERC721 protocol said, and this one for those of you who don't play our game may be confusing, um, but there is a function in the smart contract called give birth. The primary functionality um, or the primary game function is to breed kitties. So if you came into the game and you had two kitties or you had one kitty and you found someone else that you wanted to breed with, um, you would go and you would breed kitties. Uh, the underlying DNA of those kitties would result in a third kitty and this is why people come in and why people play. Uh, there's you know, all sorts of special kitties that result from the right combinations of DNA. So. What Fabiano said is that he would have liked to be able to allow users to call that function themselves. What we did was we over-engineered a solution for a problem that didn't exist yet. Uh, many of our players are crypto enthusiasts. They're people who really understand the technology. And what we built was something that was really forward-facing for consumers where you had a self-serve tool and you never had to think about 
the blockchain technology at all. And really what we should have done was empower power users in order to call that function themselves, which would essentially save them a little money. Um, if you knew what that meant, you'd do it. If you didn't know what that's meant, you would use the self-serve function. So inadvertently, we created a situation where um, we, we leapfrogged forward too fast. And again, some of the theme here is how do we take a stepped approach to make a better experience along the way for consumers as they come into our game? Gile, who is our art director, said that he would have thought about making the kitties more modular in some way. So when the game was launched, um, the kitties really were conceived in two dimensions. Um, they're very, the art is flat. Uh, if we want to go and animate it, it's not easy to animate. Um, I'm going to flip through some art slides here. So this is a pretty standard kitty. A little less standard. A lot less standard. And this, both of these kitties have special traits. Um, in this one, you can see there's some elephant feet. And in this one, there's that um, frozen snow environment. And what that does is increases the complexity of auto animation in a crazy way. There are 17 billion combinations of kitties that can exist. And we didn't really think about a great way to automate not just the creation of the kitties, but automate how they can move or how they could be more dynamic or how they could be turned into three dimensions. Um, so if you look at a kitty like Momo Chan, you could see how it's much easier to understand how those arms and legs could be moved in a modular way that could all be kind of automated for an animation. Uh, this gray kitty up at the top does not have the same kind of effect. And on kind of the note of vis visual considerations, um, Arthur was interested in allowing a more visual uh, way to show provenance. So one of the pillars of blockchain is that you know exactly where that asset was. You can track back from wallets. But for an average consumer, that may be really confusing. And they definitely don't know how to do that. They might not even know what that means. Uh, so Arthur came up with this, which I, don't, I think the team loved. And I don't know if one day you'll see this implemented. Um, but if you have a kitty, you could do something like taking a selfie with the kitty. Maybe you have some of the same functionality that you would on social platforms. Maybe you could even share that on social platforms, creating a network effect for the game itself, the art itself. Um, and then maybe you could see anybody else who had that kitty. So if someone of great interest had that kitty, it could add to the interest in that asset. This is, has nothing to do with technology. This is completely kind of a consumer facing way to help them understand that a digital asset previously had ownership. Um, so this is something that we've loved. I don't know if we'll build, um, but I'd be really surprised after this much work went into it for screenshots that it doesn't get built. Um, Mac said that he would have considered additional user behaviors when we launched. And this is one of those things that's very easy to say in hindsight that I wish that we thought about this user experience more, or I wish that we built something a little differently. Everyone in this room knows that you have limited resources and you have to decide what things you're going to build and when. And I'd guess your roadmaps are nuts. So in kind of the process of prioritization, we looked at CryptoKitties and we looked at a user experience, tried to give the best user experience possible, but of course there are other things that we could have done that might have been interesting. So, after launch, we launched several features, one of which is collections, where a user can really show off different kitties they've collected. That might be by traits. Uh, in this collection, you can see these are um, cats in a specific set challenge. So this is the kind of thing where it adds a layer of complexity into the game that's interesting. It allows people to show off some of the work that they've done um, and be proud of it. Another thing we launched was the catalog. Uh, what this does is it sorts kitties. It seems like the most obvious thing, give people an easy way to find the kitty they want. The first time I bought a kitty, I spent an hour finding a tiger cat and was ha very happy to do so. Very much love my first kitty. Um, but in this case, you could go in and say, I want to look at cats that 
have a certain cool down rate, which means that they can b maybe breed faster or it's my first kitty, maybe I don't wanna make a huge investment, but I'm excited to try this. Let me look at kitties that are great, a great value. Um, if you want a generation zero kitty, one of those kind of like immaculate conception kitties, then maybe you can search by that. But what it does is it allows for users to find what they're looking for in an easier way. And we totally didn't think about this on the front end. It seems now so obvious that we would do that, make it easier for users to come into our environment. Um, but when you are launching something, you don't always think about every element like that. Uh, so I told the team I wanted to show data in this presentation, and I also got some eyebrows for that. Um, but I'm allowed to show some stuff on this, which I thought was interesting as well. Um, we launched a, it actually isn't even a feature. We just time boxed fancy cats. So one of the uh, functionality in the game is that on certain Thursdays, you can go in and try to breed to a certain kind of cat. And this is usually a special cat. It might have some limitations in how many exist in the environment, so there's a scarcity element to it. Uh, what we hadn't done at first was time box that, where there was a cutoff and then those genes no longer made that special cat. And what we saw by doing something as simple as adding an end date is that participation during that period skyrocketed. And you could imagine that as a consumer, you go into the environment, you say, oh, maybe I don't wanna do this today, I can do this anytime, it doesn't matter. Um, but when you're told that you only have 24 hours to do something, or you only have seven days to do something, it creates an, a more of an urgency that, again, so simple to implement, had not thought about it on the front end, but made, as you can see, a measurable impact on uh, the performance during this period. So all of these things have been to say that there are lots of things that we can continue to think about in that user journey. Uh, looking backwards, there are things that maybe we would have done differently or that we would have wanted to change. There are things that we can change and as we launch new features, we will have a better and better user experience. Um, but in learning for the future, the big takeaways that we had were that you have to leave some room for flexibility and that can be difficult in our space, but it's really essential to understand how the technology you're building will be actually interacted with by consumers because that's the point, right? We all want people to use the things that we're building. Um, so leaving flexibility is important. Building with the future in mind is important. So in the example of that kind of flat art, something we had never really considered, uh, but something that now we'll always consider. Uh, how does this live in a different environment? How does this live in three dimension? How does this live when it's animated? How can we think about making that visual experience more engaging? Um, and then last, think about elements of the game or elements of the platform and the tools from a consumer lens. And we've been doing a lot of that. So our company has grown considerably over the last six months. Uh, we have many people who are starting to try to solve problems in the consumer flow. And I think everyone in this room probably talks a lot about the different problems with the platforms that we have available to us now and how we can solve that. We are building to solve that now and will in the really near future be rolling things into CryptoKitties that we wanna test how can new users come into the game how can we make it easier for an average consumer to come into the game? It's, it's great that the game has had so much pickup from crypto enthusiasts and the crypto community, but if we want our technology to be adopted, it needs to be able to be adopted by the mass consumer uh, community. So building new things to get in there and we'll be launching a new platform in the near future. I think we'll probably announce in the next week or two. Uh, it'll be at dapperlabs.com. And for anyone who isn't aware, Dapper Labs is actually the company that holds CryptoKitties. Uh, we were spun out in February when we took venture backing. So we're now publicly talking about Dapper Labs. We'll be rolling tools uh, through that platform. And if you go to the website, you can sign up for more information. Um, I am happy to take any questions that anyone has. The more technical ones I might not be able to answer. Go for it. 
So the, uh, the main things that we're concerned with are the true ownership piece of the assets. So we go away, those assets don't go away. Um, and then the second piece is extensibility. So if anyone hasn't seen, we've launched a program called the Kittyverse in which uh, we're working actively with other developers who are building games around our ecosystem. Um, Kitty Battles, uh, I don't, I'm blanking on other ones. There's a whole bunch of different, I think there are 42 different experiences that have been built on CryptoKitties so far. So as a proof case that assets could be used in an extensible way, um, we think CryptoKitties really is a, shows that, but it's important to show that. It's part of what we wanted to do. Yes. And in the near future, in I don't know if they'd be comfortable with announcing before, um, before any contracts are signed, but we've been talking to Gods Unchained about doing something where kitties can be used in their game and then things can be used um, in our game or we have some element as well to continue to pull at that thread of extensibility. Um, and we're really excited about that. We think it's gonna be great to actually see it in motion. And uh, CryptoKitties is a lot of that. It's a little bit of a prototype for an industry um, of how can we show, how can we make the best case study for these things? How do users interact with those? And then how do we continue to test almost more than anything language? Um, how do you describe to an average confu user Oh, no. Oh, I ruined it. Sorry. Um, how do you describe to an average consumer what true ownership means to them? Maybe they don't even understand that they don't own the digital assets they've bought. How do you explain to them that extensibility works and they can take this asset and go into different games? So alongside of the actual technology, learning about how to talk to people about it has been really important. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, um, it is almost all focused for DAP developers. Um, I have been given speaking points which are extremely vague, uh, but essentially there are some things that we're gonna launch that will make getting into CryptoKitties easier so far as that user flow. Um, and those tools will be available to developers. So it will be something that we're building with an eye for, as we test and learn, to share what we're testing and learning through tools. Is that a little less vague? Pretty vague. <laughs> what was that? We look for a lot of things. So we talk to ecosystem partners, um, different platforms, different protocols, different tool sets, not even only in the blockchain community, but out kind of, if you think about credit card payments or other platforms that enable um, smoother user experiences. So ecosystem partnerships are one of the areas that I look at. And what we're looking for there is um, strength of platform, proof of platform, scalability, um, and some kind of proof that whatever it is has worked. <laughs> we're not so much in the business of unproven technology, but um, we're very interested in not building everything ourselves. Uh, the second thing we look for and what I am primarily focused on is partnerships with large brands. So how do we use brands that people care about to bring people into our environment? How do we make collectibles that will resonate with sports fans or entertainment fans or music fans? Um, how do we look at the core audience that we have and find lookalikes for those? So that's a major part of it. And then the third piece is gaming partnerships. So we're focused on figuring out how to um, engage gaming companies to build new games using blockchain technology and always where it makes sense, right? Not calling it blockchain to call it blockchain, but to build something that actually makes sense from a consumer perspective. Does that answer? Prime time? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I think I think we're not quite ready for prime time, but I think the interest from those who could bring us into prime time is strong. And a lot of what I do is evangelize the technology and talk to different companies about how they can integrate and how, especially for those who have consumer facing outlets, um, that there are process efficiencies that they could do, but there's also a consumer engagement piece that they could look at. Um, but the first thing that I say is that the technology is not going to allow for every American watching a gridiron football game to participate. <laughs> and, the, and almost everyone has been okay with that. Um, there's been an understanding that it's a nascent technology and we're very much on starting to crest on that wave. Uh, but the, the interest that I'm seeing from brands is very exciting. They're bringing in licensing people and marketing people and innovation people and oftentimes like their chillest lawyer um, into the room to have a group conversation about it. Um, and to see that many uh, resources invested in some of these large organizations is great. It means that when we're ready, they'll be ready for us. Yeah, and I, we won't move CryptoKitties from Ethereum, um, but we're certainly always open to other options as we continue to build consumer-facing experiences. Um, CryptoKitties will always be our cornerstone and will always be invested in making it more and more successful, but that doesn't mean everything has to be done in the same way. Did you have a question? We talk to other chains and new chains all the time. Um, we're interested in what's going on in the larger environment because we're open to the larger environment. Um, at the time we launched, uh, and I think we would, looking back, we would still launch on the Ethereum network. Um, the strength of the developer scene there was essential, and especially as we try to prove out extensibility, there have to be people who are building uh, in order to do that. So I think looking backwards, we would say we'd do the same, but again, always open to new and different technology. If we want every one who's watching a Manchester United match to participate in something, then we need to have a more scalable option. And sorry, my background is in sports, so I'm only going to use sports analogies. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. Um, we've seen a lot of things that we've been really interested in. We've seen things that are not quite holistic. We've seen things that we feel like we can poke holes in on our end, and that is concerning. Um, Dieter has an extremely high bar for new technology um, and is somewhat brilliant, so whatever he says, <laughs> we say yes. Um, but I think we haven't found something that we've been like, this is the thing we're gonna go to yet. But that doesn't mean that some, someone we've talked to or someone we continue to talk to isn't going to build that solution. Anyone else? I'm probably almost at time. Um, feel free to email me. Um, I'll also be hanging out all day today. Happy to answer other questions or chit chat. Um, but thank you for listening to my talk. <laughs>